thanks to the supporters of channel member Terrible Gaming. No, no, it's, don't get me wrong. It's it's not that I don't appreciate it. It's just it's really unexpected. I, I was I was kind of joking when I when I said I expected money, but the fact that you've you've allowed us to sign Damien, you've allowed us to sign Duffy, you've you've upgraded the training facilities, the youth facilities, the data analysis. You've given me extra wage budget. You've given me extra transfer budget. I knew this. I knew this Europa League run was lucrative. But you know, you know, I can see the accounts, and this doesn't quite add up. Not bothered. I'll just go with it then. Hello and welcome to part 31 of the Greek Odyssey. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have two games for you in Super League. And we're away against Janina and Pauk. Um, back to back, three days apart as we look to uh, continue. I mean, I don't want to say it's a title push, but it could be a title push. Especially in light of the transfer business that we've been doing. Um, we'll, we'll jump straight into it. I've just told you most of it. Um, the, the key things are, the boys are back. Paul Duffy. Back on loan until the end of the season. He's already played three games. He's as good as he was before he left. He's played 13 times for Southampton in the Championship this year. Why they've let him come back, don't know. Uh, but also Damien is back. We are having to pay all the wages of these players, despite the fact Southampton are our parent club, which seems a little bit odd to me. Um, but Damien is back and has already got six goals from his first four games back with us. And last time I checked was considered the best striker in Super League. In fact, they're two of the best players in Super League. They've both gone into the Media Dream 11 based off their exploits last season. So that is two huge signings. I thought I had a third huge signing, but managed to get caught out by my own stupidity. We've got a record signing. Juan, £400,000 for a right back. Didn't realise they had a loan back until the end of the season. Very disappointed in myself. Um, but we also, um, in preparation for the future, Ryan Lawson's loan has been extended for another year. So Ryan Lawson is now here until the end of next season. So he's got another 18 months to run on his loan from now. Um, I wasn't able to extend Duffy or Damien's loans in the same way, I guess because their loans only started this window. If I'd have thought I could have got away with it, I'd have tried for 18 month loans straight away. But um, for whatever reason, the option isn't there to even ask too soon to extend Paul Duffy's loan agreement. I don't know when it stops being too soon. We'll keep trying before the window expires. I suspect we'll lose the opportunity to do it, though. Um, but they're, they're all the players that are in. And Andriopoulos has gone out. But in addition to all of that... We've still got £1.4 million to spend. We've still got loads of wage budget to spend. In fact, that wasn't it for transfers, because the other one is Jura's joining us permanently in the summer as well. Um, that is all set up and arranged. He wanted to go, or Ike also wanted him, um, but we just stepped in, signed him out from under them. I think this is a really good example of the progress we're making as a club. Um, yes, he was a fringe player at Real Sociedad, but the fact that he's chosen to come here ahead of one of those other Athens teams just further cements the fact that we are we are going places and he has been one of our stars this year. So to have him coming in permanently is huge. Um, I wonder if we could get Marola on loan for another... I bet we could extend... His, ah, wrong button. Can't do it now. But I bet we could extend his loan if we wanted to. Withdraw that offer. Yeah, see, so we can extend his loan. I'm not sure if it's worth it because we don't need two strikers on loan. So we won't bother for now, but he is still our top scorer as it stands. Um, Slattery is another one who, it's, I mean, there's, there's a, he's valued at 12 million quid. There's a good argument for extending his loan again if they'll let us do it. No, they want to give him a chance in the first team, which is fair enough. He's too good. But on that basis, they let us, they let us have him in the summer, but they've since let Duffy come as well. Southampton don't seem that bothered about their own first team. They just want to help us out. They are second in the championship, to be fair. And they've got some very good players. I'm not going to argue. If they go back to the Premier League, that's good for us because it means we're more likely to get our boys back again. But in addition to all the money and the signings, we've also had, um, in, we're in the process of having upgraded training, youth and data analysis facilities. So our club facilities are looking good as well. We're still in the Europa League, remember? Um, but exceptional youth recruitment, exceptional academy, um, superb youth facilities. We're getting better with our data analysis and training facilities um, this still worries me, the fact we're still seeking planning permission on a ground too small to play in Europe. 
but hopefully we'll scrap that plan and either stick with this one or look to upgrade that to, to something of a roughly equivalent size. Because if we have a look at our average attendance this season, so our average attendance this season, 12,216, almost double the capacity of the new ground we're looking at. It would be an absolute madness to downgrade at this point and hopefully not something we're going to be doing. But lots of awesome stuff putting in place for the future and for next season. Um, in the meantime, we need to keep the winds a rolling as we try and... I mean, I'm not even thinking in terms of qualifying for the Champions Group now. We know we're going to do that. It's now all about trying to put some pressure on Olympiacos and there's still a lot of this season still to play. It's, I think it's a 33-game season. And when all is said and done, so we're not even halfway through the season yet. Ten points behind, but with a game in hand. And now with our boys back and potentially more players to come in. And Amanolidis is getting better and better all the time. He's the third top scorer in the division now. Everything is looking good at Apollon. And hopefully we can pick up a couple of wins today just to confirm that. So we've got Brinoli in goal. A back four of Kalapitas, Kios, Lawson and Svarnas. Labru at the base in the midfield. He's still here. That's massive. Duffy and Andrutsas ahead of him. It's like the good old days having those two back together in midfield again. And then Jura, Amanolidis and Damien as our front three. Dame, it's like Damien never left. He scored a hat-trick in his first game back and he just looks so dangerous every time he gets near a ball. Don't get me wrong, I enjoyed Marola. He got 12 goals in... I mean, he was almost scoring at a goal a game. Marola is a very, very good striker. He is no Damien. Damien is just on another level. Um, both Damien and Duffy are labelled as wonder kids. They're proper English wonder kids. And I just don't understand how we've got them on loan again. It was mad that we got them last year. It was understandable that we couldn't get them back. But the fact that we've the fact that we've got them back when they were both playing for Southampton in a promotion push, absolute madness. And I'm not going to complain about it at all. Jura going very close with only two minutes on the clock. Um, Janina or Janina, I keep being told I've got to say it because I'm pronouncing it wrong. I'm, that one, that one, I'm going to struggle with more than Ike and Offi and Powak. Um, it's Yanni, Yanina. Um, I can't see a G and pronounce it a Y. I'll get there maybe at some point. Today is not that day. What needs to happen is they need to get relegated and then we don't need to worry about it. Um, it's only the fact that they're still in this league that makes it an issue that I say it wrong. Right, Duffy plays it out to Kalapitas and Jura ahead of him who's just charging infield. He's enjoying playing with Damien. We've got so much goal threat now in this front three with options to come off the bench as well. Um, Duffy back to uh, Labru, who plays it out to Svarnas. Infield to Amanulidis. Svarnas again, cross comes in. Damien's there. He hits the crossbar. There's chaos in the six-yard box, but they just about managed to scramble it clear, and we have to wait a little bit longer to try and grab a goal. This is our game in hand over Olympiacos, I've just noticed. So it is mega important that we pick up a win because that then puts us seven points away from them with and we've still got to play them three more times in the league this year so seven points behind with three more games to play against them feels like a title push that's in our own hands if we let the gap get too big it becomes less in our hands because remember this is a very good Olympiacos team that's into the knockout round of the Champions League hasn't lost a game in the league this season we think we're doing well and overperforming um, Olympiacos are arguably doing even better and overperforming even more. So we do need to, I think it's, uh, we need to temper expectation a little bit. We're probably not going to win the league this year. If we keep improving the way we are, we might next year. But it's shaping up for there to be two very, very good teams appearing here in Greece, which does help with the long-term goals of the save. Obviously, I want to win the league more often than not. But the long term is win the Champions League. So we've got to get that coefficient up, get, avoid those stupid qualifying rounds, get the Greek national team levelling up as well. And the best way to do that is for two, three, four Greek teams to end up competitive in Europe. So to see Olympiakos already getting there is a good sign. Emanoulidis with the cross to Jura, who can't quite direct his header goalwards, but it's now Jura with a corner. I'm trying to fix this whilst a corner's coming in. Um, I don't know who he was aiming at there. It's fallen to Labru, and that's a ridiculous diving headed clearance from the from the Giannina defender. But it's actually done very well. And they're in here and Brunoli, luckily, 
is there to just do what he does and make the save. There was never much doubt that the save was going to be made because we know he's such a good goalkeeper. But I am starting to worry a little bit that we're now 60 minutes into this game and we still haven't made the breakthrough. Oliver Malalidis is there. Just score, for goodness sake. He finally does. Can't be offside because it was directly from a throw. He took his time turning that ball into the back of the net. It's like he didn't realise he had it. No one's tackling him. He's not kicking it. But it's a ninth goal of the season for Manolidis now. And that is it's absolutely nuts how long it took him to tuck that away. But he finally did. And it's Janino nil, Apollon 1. And as you can see, that's the goal. If things stay as they are, that puts us just seven points behind Olympiakos. And arguably even more importantly, ten points clear of Ike as we look to... Uh, as we look to make sure that we're in those Champions League qualifying games again next season, because that's absolutely where we want to be. Right, Morola's going to come on for Damien. Damien didn't didn't want to show off for you for once. He normally lo he normally loves playing up for the cameras, but maybe not today. Baja can come on for Jura, and this is what I mean about having strength in depth now. I would feel a lot more confident going into next season's Champions League qualifiers, knowing that we're going to be able to do it with a team that's already taking shape for next year. Um, the one thing we don't really have yet is the striker, but we'll obviously try and we'll try and extend Damien's deal. Failing that, maybe extend Marola's deal. It might be worth doing that now, even if we don't plan to play him, just so that we know he's here for those Champions League qualifiers, so we don't get ourselves into the same pickle we did last year. But Amanolidis will be here, Baja will be here, Jura will be here, so we are going to have attacking options. It's good. Things are, things are taking shape. Beautiful stuff from Lawson again. He is a very good defender. To know that he's here for another year and a half, I'm genuinely starting to believe that we might be able to get him back permanently. Is that being given as a penalty? The ref's doing his long, slow run into the other half and around to the little telly. I'm just looking at him, arms crossed, crossed, arms crossed, scornfully looking at him. If you're going to give that as a penalty, you're an idiot because it absolutely was never a penalty. I was in the middle of a speech about how great he is. No penalty. Exactly. What a kerfuffle for something that we all knew was not a penalty. There was no foul there. It was just a good tackle. Ridiculous. Right, we've got 10 seconds left, but a highlight has appeared and we've not got the ball in it. So a little bit of final seconds of panic. If they score here, I would end the, end the match in a grumpy mood. Luckily, they didn't. And that should be enough. In fact, we don't even take the goal kick. We've made hard work of that tonight. Um, in fact, I will say we got away with it a little bit because we did get away with it a little bit. We need to be better than that against Park, and that's who we play now. So no changes then for the Park game. One transfer has happened, though. Um, we've signed a young striker from Paris Saint-Germain. We were originally bringing him in on a free transfer, um, on a freebie end of contract thing in the summer, but they had the option to buy him now and he was only going to cost 12 grand. And I thought, you know what? We've been being 18 with a birthday in March. It's worth spending 12 grand to bring him in six months early because he'll then become homegrown at club, which isn't going to be a massive issue for us here because we know that we've got lots of good players coming through our youth team what we didn't have coming through our youth team was a young high quality striker and I think that's what we've got in Roland Etta imagine all the ETA puns we're going to get out of this guy um, scored 10 goals in 17 games for the PSG uh, reserve team which I mean I don't know how good that level of football is compared to the Greek league but I see that kind of goal return and I think He's worth a go and he's got four and a half star potential ability and he's in. And hopefully, even if he doesn't end up being as good as Damien, if he's someone who can sit on our bench ahead of Luris and be a backup striker, then I'm all right with that. I can definitely live with that. Right, power cut fourth. We're first on form. Let's show them why. To be fair, this is the same talk, team talk we just did against Giannino and it didn't really work against them. So I might have to rethink this team talk if it doesn't work today. But we don't really have the option to avenge stuff very often anymore, which is always my favourite one, because most of these teams we already beat the first time round. So <laughs> there's no, there's nothing to avenge. Oh, Lebrou's given away a penalty there with two minutes on the clock and that is sloppy. I imagine Frank Lampard's here again because he basically lives in Greece now. It looks like we're going over to the little telly. This seems almost as unnecessary as in the last game because whereas the last one was a nailed-on penalty, that was definitely not a penalty. This one is a nailed-on penalty. He's nowhere near the ball. He takes the man down. Obviously, this is a penalty, and it's about to be given. 
We don't need to go to the little telly. I can see from here whether they're penalties or not. Just let me choose. Football manager needs to let me be the VAR. That'd be better. Forget football manager. We want VAR simulator. And all you do is get to be the VAR. And that's the game. Love that. It'd be amazing. That would keep me amused. Imagine making YouTube videos about that. It'd be sensational. That guy there was having a lovely time. Leaping off his feet. We're 1-0 down though. Which is not part of the script for today's episode. So let's have an early 10 minutes of passion. And hopefully sort ourselves out and get ourselves back to back to the kind of form we have been showing what is going on Duffy and Damien are back how are we not dominant the last time they were together in this team we won like eight or nine games in a row we were unstoppable they're here now and we're two nil down inside 10 minutes I don't understand <laughs> oh this has happened in a couple of away games this season now where our our Gagan pressing system just has looked a little questionable against some of these some of the better teams away from home. I think we might be having another one of those days. Demand more. Maybe we should be coming to these games counter attacking. We I think we get a little bit too big for our boots sometimes and forget that we are just little older pollen and there are some good teams in this league who are quite capable of doing stuff like this to us. Right, Emanolidis skips past his man. He's got Damien inside of him, decided to have a shot for himself. And it's, I would call that quite wasteful, bearing in mind who was there free in the penalty area, ready to score another goal. But Emanolidis is in good form. He's scored more goals than Damien so far this season. So I guess he has every right to uh, to have a go at it himself. But he needs to do better with it than that to to justify me letting him shoot in future. Right, Brinoli plays it forward, looking for Jura, finds him. Jura brings it down beautifully. And we've now got men in the middle. I was going to say men over. It's not even close to men over. They've, it's like they're playing a back five. What system are they playing? Only a back five. They're basically mirroring our system of a 4-2-3-1. They just looked very, very deep. Right. Show me something different in the second half. This has been rubbish so far. How can we have Damien's comeback episode and him not score? Because he's been brilliant until I turned the cameras on. Come on, Damien. Remind everyone why you were such a hero. Here he goes. Damien is in. A self-made effort and a self-made goal. There you go. Damien's back. Already his seventh goal since returning to Greece. And, I mean, he did that all himself, didn't he? This is... This is just good stuff. You don't get this from Marola. I enjoy Marola, but I love Damien. This is this is just brilliant. What a finish. And now we we continue to push forward and try and win this game. Forget letting them have the ball. What is this? What is this? Duffy gets it clear. Demand more again. We're going attack him. We need to we need to sort ourselves out. If we're genuinely in a title race, we need to win this game. None of this what's happened here? Oh, they one of their players handballed. That's all right then. But none of this coming to places like this and trying to get a draw. That's the that's the attitude of older pollen. We want to come here with a bit of swagger, the way Olympiakos probably do, and try and win the game. If we're if we're gonna take over Olympiakos as the big team in Greece, that's the attitude we have to have. Duffy plays it out to Kalapitas, who's pretty much our left back now. Um, especially now we've spent a lot of money bringing in a new right back who'll join us in the summer. Kalapitas showing his versatility again, but he is a right-footed left-back. So I still think he might eventually end up being a centre-back for us, but I've been saying that for three seasons now, and he's only ever really played full-back. And you lot have been convinced all along he's a right-back. So maybe he is. Maybe we'll find a decent left-back and he'll go back over to right-back at some point. Right, Brunoli has the ball and 29 minutes of game remaining. He rolls it out to Kios, who only just gets it. It was a poor a poor little bit of distribution from Brunoli, but Kios just about managed to save him. But because of that, it was a panicked ball forward that's just given possession straight back to Powok. And now they're coming at us. Kalapitas plays it back to Brunoli again, and hopefully we can build a little bit more sensibly this time. Lawson to Svarnas, now Andrutsos and then Manolidis. He's got Lebru up there supporting him. Duffy as well. He plays it over the top. Looking for Jura, who's got Damien in the middle. And Emanolidis is going to be coming in off that right wing as well. Kalapitas now tries to get the cross in. There is Emanolidis. And there is his 10th goal of the season. And our second of the game. And with 28 minutes left. It's Powok 2. Apollon 2. And we're just going to keep going at this. Do we stay attacking? 
I think I think we do. I think we want to win the game. I don't think there's any benefit now to us drawing games like this. And I know we're not even at the halfway point of the season yet, but we are chasing Olympiakos and one point isn't going to help us chase them. We're not going to fall out of the championship group. We need to be we need to be gambling on earning three points rather than trying to protect one, which might end up being seen as really risky. But Damien's in here and surely of all the goals we've seen Damien score, it's a free kick anyway for offside, which is why he deliberately missed. Because of all the, the amount of times we've seen him score harder chances than that, there's no way he misses that. He just didn't try because he knew he was offside. Right, Jura's going to come off for Baja on this left-hand side. Um, Labru can come off for Calavera. I'm, t I'm tempted... Mm, I'm tempted to bring Slattery on for either Duffy or Andrutsos and do a triple change and just get more energy in the midfield. In fact, I think I will bring Slattery on for Andrutsos. And we've now got the three Southampton men as basically our central attacking unit. Um, Slattery with a corner that misses absolutely everybody. It looks like we're going over for a penalty review. I'm not sure what's happened here. I'm guessing there must be some kind of scuffling or a handball or something. There didn't seem to be anything particularly close to where the ball was that could be a problem. I'm welcoming the referee over with open arms now for this penalty review. And God, give us the penalty. There's a good boy. Let's have it. Penalty. Penalty. It's a penalty. Right. Here we go then. Baja, what? I didn't get there quick enough. Why is Baja taking it when Damien's on the pitch? Damien should be taking our penalties. Baja steps up and scores. That's why he's taking it. He's good at penalties. We'll drop down to positive. Six goals now for the season for Baja as well, for a player who's never really been a regular starter. We have plenty of goal threats in this side. I, re I, I really, really like this Apollon team. I think it's it's probably pretty clear from the commentaries and from the episodes how much I'm enjoying this save in this team. But goodness me, are we assembling some good players at this club. And I love the fact that there's still so many of them that are homegrown, especially at the back. I mean, we've got three homegrown defenders in our back, plus our defensive midfielder. We just need some homegrown attackers to come through. And they just does, I think people warned me about this before the save started that my kind of attackers will be harder to come by in Greece. Barger's just got them before, and that is sensational. And we're now dropping some praise. What a turnaround. It's now Pauk 2, Apollon 4. But the type of players who Greece typically produce in Football Manager, we've got them in our team. The defensive midfielders, the defenders, they're, they're the ones who are in our team. We just need the, the special talents to come through now. The Andrutsoses who typically don't seem to come through Apollon. We need them to start emerging here. But that was a good performance. Um, you done brilliant. We did do brilliantly to come back. We deserve a big pat on the head for that. And that leaves us, as we're just about at the halfway point of the season, seven points behind Olympiakos, knowing we have to play them three more times over the course of the season. It's on, boys and girls. And tomorrow we're going to be back with the first leg against Dortmund as we, we go and find out how good we really are by playing in Europe again. Spoilers, we're going to get an absolute battering tomorrow. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.